There's a haze that circles around our most important moments. And I say haze because often the things that will uh, be most meaningful in our lives or that will best position us for future transformation or success, they don't accurately depict the value that they ultimately provide. In fact, a lot of the time we get the opposite impression. The answer is deceptively masked as the problem. The thing we are most inclined to run away from. It's often unclear to us that the pain we're experiencing will become the purpose. The loss will become the strength. We can't always see that losing the job will become our reason to find ourselves and the work that will be most meaningful. We don't always understand that losing someone that was a big part of our lives will ultimately create a little space that will bring about connection with others who will lift us up and make us better. We aren't always aware that falling short is incredibly powerful because it's what most often prompts us to look in the mirror and ask that magical question, how can I be better? Again, we see it in a million different ways, different contexts. The solutions masquerade as problems, or as has been famously put, the way often presents itself as the obstacle. Which means we have to operate with a sense of awareness and understanding that often eludes us. Sometimes the reality is that it hurts to let go. But if it's not right for you, it hurts to hold on as well. The difference is when you do find the strength to let go, you simultaneously create space for the things that will make your life better. And I've noticed, you know, as I've navigated this crazy place well into my 30s, that the discomfort I've experienced in the past, it rarely uh, utilizes my future as its benchmark, right? When I'm uncomfortable, it's because something has gone awry in the now. This moment hurts. In this moment, I feel less than. In this moment, I feel lost. In this moment, I am X, Y, or Z. It's all generally immediate, emotive responses to what's happening. Which is why I advocate so strongly for pausing, pulling back, taking a breath, and assessing the whole picture in totality. See, I've made decisions in my life that have set me back a year, right? That destroyed me emotionally, totally altered my plans. And I look back on some of those decisions now with all the pain they brought, and I think, you know, was there another way? Did I make the right move? Did I need to endure all that? And I'm not going to pretend, you know, I know how some parallel universe would have unfolded if I acted differently. But as I reflect back, I still think that I made the right choice. I don't see another way. Sometimes there are no easy decisions. Sometimes life is about choosing the least bad option. I've talked about having to step back in order to leap forward or stepping sideways in order to ultimately advance. Sometimes the thing we need just looks like discomfort, the sheep in wolves clothing, where you have to seek out monsters in order to destroy the ones that live inside of you. The reason, one, I think this is so important and two, I'm so passionate about sharing it with others is because, again, our instincts drive us away from the things we need most. That's just how it is. Humans are more uh, emotional than we are rational. And there have been plenty of times where, you know, just being reminded, you know, Eddie, I get that this is challenging, but where do you most want to go? Eddie, you're playing defensive which I'm sure minimizes problems now, but will never propel you forward with your career. 
Eddie, you're dragging your feet and calling it perfectionism. Could it in fact be fear? Right? I've had a lot of these little, uh, and sometimes not so little, epiphanies over the course of the last decade. You know, when people ask me about speaking, which being that I do it for a living would make sense, right? Tips or insights, whatever it is, I'm being completely sincere when I say that I wish I had some formula I could propose, right? That would make you go from zero to 60 in three months. But the truth is the biggest bang for your buck is stepping right into the terror. The thing you're most inclined to run from. And that was it for me, right? Sheer terror, actually shaking. Nights where I stayed awake, reciting keynotes into hotel mirrors. Couldn't eat. And I'd, you know, wrap up, the event would be over, I'd just go back to the room and collapse in bed because I hadn't slept the night before, right? That's how it started. And the more times I didn't give myself a way out, the more I saw past the fear, put emotions aside, and reiterated to myself that underneath all that discomfort was value, the better I became. The less dramatic each speaking engagement became. And the terror evolved into excitement. Eddie, please get through this, eventually evolved into Eddie, how can you make this speaking engagement more exciting, more fun, more captivating than the last one? Right. I recently spoke at the MGM Grand Arena, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And I'm sure you can imagine, not necessarily because of the event, but it prompted me to think back to all those times I wanted to say no so badly, with all my heart, with every fiber of my being, but didn't. It was just a proud feeling. Like you get those moments from time to time where everything becomes a single snapshot. It all makes sense. Because right? over times I truly didn't understand why I was moving forward, I just did. I just knew I'd burn the boats, there were no other options. And when you collect that W, you quickly remember. And so all this to emphasize the very important point that it may not be speaking at the MGM Grand Arena that's your North Star. Maybe it's something totally different. But I want to remind you that the road to wherever you most want to be is not perfectly paved and decorated with flowers. It won't always be sunny with clear blue skies. And to take it even further, the paths that are paved with flowers and clear blue skies are often the wrong ones. In a world of trade-offs, we know that the best things often require the greatest sacrifice. The beautiful things are often derived from a willingness to endure prior turbulence. And should you find yourself amidst all that, in the thick of it, it's essential to know that should you choose to do so, you can transform the chaos into something incredible. Realistically, that pain of loss, we can't do anything about, right? Nature has made it so that we feel every sense of what's been taken away. But nature doesn't do such a good job of reminding us of the infinite value that can now move into our souls, be used to open our eyes so that we may see the world as we've never seen it before. There is such power and the ability to view that fleeting emotion, the discomfort of now, in terms of what it will ultimately become. As the saying goes, the hardest thing and the right thing are often the same thing. So be your own judge, your own critic. Decide what best points you to that place amongst the stars you long to be. Just understand that the road won't be pain-free, and those who try to make it so miss out on a lot of the brilliance available to us. That haze that tries to conceal what's most important is only effective if we keep our eyes closed, if we aren't honest with ourselves. But if you know, one, what's most important, and two, are committed to one day arriving there, the short-term obstacles, become a relatively small price to pay.